ahead, Bob. You're up. Okay. Uh, first question tonight is why are you interested in serving on the Spring Lake Park City Council? Um, I guess I'm interested in serving because I think that uh, one that I'm I feel like at least if I'm not informed I attend the meetings on a regular basis and so I have some level of participation already um, and I think that uh, looking at the um, different groups of people in the city um, I would say that no offense to anybody on the council already the younger professional is not represented on the council um, and for somebody who is going to you know has been here for um, 13 years already and not really looking to change anything I mean I've got a vested interest in the future of the city for um, beyond the the vision plan that's already been developed for the next uh, what is it 25 27 years left in it so um, that's really essentially why I'm, why I'm interested okay. <clears throat> please give us a brief overview of your education and work experience um, well, I didn't answer those questions on the uh, form itself already. Um, I can give you an interview. I can give you an answer if you're genuinely interested. But I think that being a resident of the city itself is really the important qualification, and maybe education and experience, work experience, can provide some specific level of, of uh, speciality in terms of experience for things. But being a resident and, and living here, I think, is the important part of the experience. Um, I went to high school, I did post-secondary enrollment options instead of college. Uh, I was an innovator in technology, I still am an innovator in technology, doing um, work for small business and, and individuals, uh, in computer science. And um, so I didn't finish a college degree because they didn't teach the classes to do what the computers were doing in the 90s. It was really kind of um, hands-on, I mean, they were teaching, to give you an idea, they were teaching mainframe languages for uh, banks and stuff like that, not teaching websites and server setups and networks and, and that kind of information. So I've been self-employed with a couple brief stints contracting since I was 14 when I founded the company that I, I run today. So. Is that enough? Do you want more, <laughs> more you. on that? Yeah, Thank, you're Thank you. <clears throat> what attributes would you bring to the council? Um, well, I think you know. I think everybody knows here that I'm not afraid to ask questions if something, you know, doesn't uh, doesn't seem to make sense or that I don't understand. So I, I'm. I try not to cause problems uh, where there aren't questions to be asked, but I think I would bring. Uh, some level of uh, just another perspective. I can't really, you know, give you a, a, a another more detailed answer than that. Um, it's hard to say what you can bring until you are there. Oftentimes, so. <clears throat> yep. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> um. What do you believe are the city's strengths? Um, I believe the city's strengths are we've got a long, a long amount of experience between the employees, so there's a familiarity with how things work, and it's um, people are comfortable in their positions and in, in the relationships, the working relationships they have because they've been long-term relationships. I think another advantage of this city is that um, we're fairly small in terms of the metro, so we have the opportunity to make changes and and um, change things or develop things more easily because it's a smaller area to develop or to change. Um, in terms of the other strengths of the city, I, th I think that we have some sense of, of community that's been established for a long time. We have the Lions, we have the VFW, um, we've got some businesses that have been here a while. Uh, so I think that uh, that would be what I would say for the strengths of the, of the city. What do you feel are the greatest issues facing the city? I think the um, greatest issues facing the city are probably that <clears throat> when we talk about people having their positions for a long time, you know, if something's working, you don't have an, an, uh, an need to change it and there's been innovations technologically 
that could allow the city to communicate more clearly with more information to the residents. Um, speaking from experience on why I've been getting involved in speaking at meetings and requesting information is because it, it hasn't been made available. Um, one thing I've looked at is we get the packets, um, you know, paid by the Public Works Department to provide the fall newsletter and the spring newsletter. Well, those could be used to communicate information much more um, broadly to the residents, and we see the same information in those all the time. So I think something that the city could work on, and they have been working on, uh, is communicating more clearly to the residents, and, and um, I think that's one of the important things. Thank you. Can you explain your philosophy about public services, taxes, and budgeting? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think the purpose of government and the pur purpose of the city is to provide a good for the residents in a sense that <clears throat> to provide services in a way that benefit all the residents um, and to um, see if I can phrase this the right way. To basically provide community service like snow plowing, water, things like that. Um, but I don't necessarily see the function of the city as to provide uh, fringe benefits for some residents and not others. One thing that um, comes to mind on that, to give you a little bit of specifics and we can tie this in with budgeting, is that when you have a um, park and rec department, and I know I've been hard on them, where residents and non-residents pay the same fee, but if the programs don't make money, essentially the residents are subsidizing non-residents to participate in those programs. So the things that I disagree with are things like that, where I have an issue where the residents are subsidizing programs that not everybody is benefiting from directly, and um, subsidizing non-residents, essentially. So. In terms of budgeting, I, I believe that the city should provide basic services where they can find it, where they're using the service, like the water service, um, and uh, trying to think of another service, water service, some other services that they provide to all the residents. Um, but um, so you're saying something along the lines like law enforcement, fire protection, water service, sewer, right? Where you have a best public. Yeah, you can argue the greater good for the vested interest of uh, the citizens with fire service. You know, you don't want your neighbor's house burning down next year because it could burn down your house, that kind of stuff, where those programs benefit all the residents, and obviously the residents pay for that. One thing that I, you know, as a, something to, to look at um, in that vein is moving, you know, Basically, what what does the city put into property taxes, and what do the property taxes actually cover? And I know that's outlined in the budget, but looking at being more itemized with those, like with the water and sewer bill, there's a lot of itemization so that people understand what they're actually paying for in that bill. And if people had an idea that oh, I'm paying forty-five dollars, you know, a quarter for fire service, actually it's probably less than that, and I'm paying three hundred dollars a quarter for police service, you know. It's something that people may have an interest in understanding, and you can break that down through the budget. But I think that, um, so when you talk about budgeting, I think providing information to the residents on where their money's actually going um, allows them to be more engaged in where the city is actually spending money. If you could change some aspects of Spring Lake Park's governance, direction, and focus, what would that be? Um, you know, I would, like I had just mentioned, I'd like to stop subsidizing non-residents um, participation in programs. Uh, I just went to the Shoreview Community Center uh, a couple weeks ago, and they ask you, are you a resident or a non-resident? And if you're a non-resident, it's $9 to just go swimming there. I mean, if you're Brooklyn Park, was like 450 And if you're a resident, it's almost half that price. 
So I'd like to see that the residents paying for programs, um, but you know I'd like to see us making a profit or not subsidizing non-residents essentially. Um, I think that can that's one of the things that I would like to change in the city. Um, I'd also like to look at the ordinances in the city and, and where we can. I'd like to stop prosecuting victimless crimes, like administrative things. I know the city um, issues citations or has the authority to issue citations. If you put your garbage can out on the street for more than 24 hours of surrounding the, the period of um, you know the pickup, and whether or not that's enforced uh, uniformly or arbitrarily, it's just a, in a way for, for the city to or somebody in the city to call on their neighbor. So things like that, that really don't provide any, I mean, it's a cosmetic thing if people can't talk to their neighbors. Uh, you know, that's, that's a breakdown in the community at the basic level. So I'd like to see, um, I mean, I can talk about those. I don't know what other questions are coming up, but re regarding that topic, there are a few things I wanted to say on that, so. And what would be your main focus would be your final, the governance direction, which I think you both covered. Now your focus, what would you like to focus on? I'd like to focus on actually having a community um, in the community. We've, we've developed that in my neighborhood um, through talking with the neighbors. And we don't talk about politics. You know, most of the time we talk about flowers or snowstorms or whatever. You know, we shovel each other's driveways, that kind of thing. And... Um, to just be, you know, to get the city involved with communicating with each other. We've got uh, changing of the guard in terms of residents. You know, we've got a lot of different people moving in, um, you know, younger people. And I'd like to make sure that we're communicating with each other and having an environment where we're kind of stepping back and, and not rushing so much, like, you know, being in the metro and, and making it a little bit more like the Mayberry. It's, it's uh, everybody claims it's supposed to be. So, um, yeah, so I'd like to do more in terms of outreach to, to know that stuff is available, like we talked about with the, um, the recycling, uh, what do they call it, the environmental uh, panel that was dissolved or looked at being dissolved. I mean, I'd never heard of that, and I come to how many meetings? So th there may be ways that people would like to participate but that aren't aware of it, and until... There's more communication outside of the election cycle. I think that you know we're going to have that lack of communication with the residents. So does that answer your vision? Statement? Yep. Thanks. Over the next three to five years, what goals do you want to see? One, the police department achieve. Two, the liquor store achieve. And three, the park and rec department achieve. Um, the police department, I uh, would love for more involvement with the community. Um, uh, the new chief and I, we haven't talked too terribly much, um, and the old chief, it was difficult to, to communicate with at times with, um, you know, we had break-ins and we had robberies and things, and the, we were told, well, if we, if we publish that or if we put it anywhere, then the criminals would know that it was going on and they'd rob the people who just got their stuff insurance replaced. So that's why we bonded together as a neighborhood. So I'd, I'd love to see more communication, uh, blotter on the website, something with the police department so that those of us who either experience the crime, witness the crime, report a crime, or are noticing suspicious behavior can not only talk to the police but look on, on a location online or somewhere and find out what's going on. Um, I believe the chief had talked about using Nixle. Uh, well, I've been following Nixle. It hasn't been updated in 19 months now for any announcements from the city of Spring Lake Park. Uh, Mounds View updates theirs more frequently, um, and it is helpful, but if it's not being updated, it doesn't provide any benefit. So, I mean, I, if I can hammer one thing home again, it's communication, communication, communication. So, I think for, for the few of us that do come and, and ask questions, I'm sure there are more people that are asking those questions and just not coming, so. Do you organize a night to unite on your street? We do. We've done it the last couple of years. Okay. Um, but I think we're going to start organizing stuff outside of that as well. 
Um, and then the liquor, liquor store. store. Liquor store, I'd like to see them actually profitable uh, competitively with Fridley. Um, I don't, you can quote me on one of these two figures. I know for at least two liquor stores either produce $450,000 a year in revenue or $800,000 a year in revenue. I don't remember which one it is off the top of my head. Um, so I'd like to see us up over five, preferably 7% um, net revenue on the liquor store. That would be uh, my goal for the liquor store. And Park and Rec, uh, like I talked about earlier, I'd like to see them um, stop subsidizing non-residents. Uh, if we, I'd like to know what the breakdown is on the profitability of each program so that we can understand what we're going to decide as a cost benefit or if if you have one program or two programs that are extremely profitable and you're using the profits from those programs to provide all these others, does that make sense? Is that really where we should be investing our time? Um, I know that uh, I guess that's what I would evaluate with the um, with the park and rec, specifically. Okay. And Dan, how do you want to do this since we're... Oh, we're good. Yes. Ooh. We're okay. All okay. right. <clears throat> Can you describe your experience, <clears throat> excuse me, in working collaboratively and building consensus? Uh, I work on projects daily. Um, running a small business, I collaborate with uh, vendors and customers to produce the product that the, the customers want and the, and the end result and they're happy with. So in terms of collaboration, I think that um, it's all about communication and um, making sure that that the end result is actually satisfactory to what you're, you're looking for and there's a lot of different ways to approach it, obviously. And so I think it's being civil and being, um, but being direct at the same time. So. Um, there aren't bad questions, I guess. So the more stuff that you can understand about something, I think, is helps develop and fully flesh out whatever the collaboration is that you're working on. Does that kind of answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Two questions left. <clears throat> Number 10 here is... Uh... Is your business and personal schedule flexible enough to accommodate your normal meeting schedule and to allow for an occasional day or early evening function? Will you have adequate time to read your packet and do any necessary research prior to the council meeting? You want meetings? me to put my hand up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and you know, I want to I wanna put a caveat with that and say that there are times that I already know that I won't be able to attend a few meetings, whether I'm out of town, you know, over a Monday in June, that kind of thing. Um, I would like to see the, the council consider, I can, I can be available for the time, I just won't physically be in the cities. So I'm thinking three meetings this, this coming year that I can think of already. Um, that were pre-scheduled before, obviously, this situation happened that opened up this position. So, um, you know, looking at Skype or looking at some way that we can electronically participate um, I'm happy to be available for the time, uh, but I just, like I say, if I'm if I'm out of town for two weeks at a time and it crosses over the first and the end of the month, there's nothing I can do about it. I can physically be avail I can be available at seven o'clock, but I can't physically be in this room. So, so yes and but. <laughs> <clears throat> Last one. Is there anything else you'd like to add? to assist us in considering you as a candidate? Um, you know, the only... I'll say one other thing I had in my, my notes, and then I'll, I guess I can give my closing uh, statement on that. You know, one thing I would like to see, um, I thought, was a little awkward when we had the, um, the individuals come up with their mother for the fees for the house for the vacancy. Um, do you remember that? Where they were assessed a $700 or $650 vacancy and, and certificate of occupancy fee. And then you have the, I'd like, so the, I guess what I'll say is I'd like to have, I'd like to see 
if I was selected to set up a citizen's review for these administrative fees and ordinances, because you have the city council that passes the laws and sets the values of the fees, deciding whether or not to charge being the review board, because that's what happened then, is you received the notice to say, please review this, and the review board is the people who are setting the laws, and so of course you're not going to say no, because you've already set the laws. Um, not to say that, you know, that you're not individuals and have morality or ethics or anything like that, but to see the sword separated from the purse strings kind of, kind of deal, so that there's some citizens available to actually say, oh, well, this is, a, you know, she was in the hospital, and her lawn was mowed, and her bills were paid, but yet they still filed the house as vacant, just because that's what the rules say, um, you know. So, but getting on that, I guess the other things to consider is, you know, I may be um, somebody who speaks out at times, but I think that during all of our interactions, it's been respectful and um, civil. So I would, you know, look towards bringing that to the council. Um, and uh, I think that's really, that's really it. I'd like to get the, uh, I'd like to be more interactive with the, with the residents um, on stuff. So, thank you for your time. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, right. yep. Have to sign in. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't have one of those.